okay, do you know what we mean when we talk about like having having a moment where you look around at your life and just you just have a private thought of, is this it? Is this my life? Well, in this episode, we talk about dreaming again, how to dream again, how to get that fire back, the inner fire. I'm Sienna. And I'm Toast. We've been partners in life, love, and music since 2001. And we believe life is best lived as a love story. Your love story. After all, to love well is to live well. For more, check out SiennaandToast.com. But for now, here's this episode. (laughs) Hey! Welcome to... How to dream again. That's what we're planning to call this episode. You you forgot. We'll call it. You kind of forgot. Kind of. You saw my mind go (laughs) blank. It's the fire episode. Oh, but we're gonna. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm I'm all over the place. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast where you witness toast having had too much coffee. We're three episodes in. See, we record these (laughs) like one after the other, and then we release them weekly. Anyways. Reminder before we forget, it's still December, so we're still doing this experiment of asking you to please rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a new review. Let us know. Email us at info at com, And we would love to send you a special code just for you. It's a unique code just to you that will get you $10 off our new magic shop at com. Okay, Very good. so that's the announcement. And now, before we talk about dreaming again. Oh, what? Well, we didn't really welcome everyone and like, you know. Oh, I thought we did. I mean, we, you got all like excited about the oh. thing you didn't want to forget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everyone. So welcome. Yes. I'm sorry. In a calm manner. I forgot manner. to welcome you. Actually, we don't have to be calm. Welcome in. Okay. Sit down. My brother gave us access to his Disney Plus channel. Is that what it's called? Disney Plus? I think so. Okay. And I got to say, now no one get mad at me or get mad at me. Look at me. People pleaser. (laughs) 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 My issues are coming up. Um. I'm not, like, this huge lover of, like, Disney movies. Yeah, me neither. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't I mean, need to be sorry. There's nothing to apologize I know. For. I just heard myself say that yeah. twice. I'm not sorry. There. You're neutral. You're just neutral. <laughs> you're not Yeah, you're no, not I don't being, hate them. Yeah. It's just no. that if someone says, hey. Are you um, a Disney fan? Well, not even that. If they're like, hey, let's go see the new insert new disney film Mm -hmm. or i'll say new animated disney film okay i'm just like no thanks you know i'm more like that like i like you know so anyways when he offered it i was excited though because i knew that it was going to have star wars here there and everywhere and toast is a huge star wars fan so i was excited for you actually Oh, Toast. thanks. But what yeah, happened last excited. night? But what happened last night? Well, what happened was... Who was left was watching by herself? Sienna was. So I was <laughs> very excited to sit down and bring up as our first viewing experience on Disney Plus, The Mandalorian. And I explained to Sienna what it was. Well, explain you know, to them because they might not know. Well... The Mandalorian is the name of a made-for-TV TV TV series on Disney+, Plus, available exclusively on Disney+. Uh, And although the Star Wars universe has been the setting for other TV series, all of those other TV series have been cartoons. Mm. So The Mandalorian is not a cartoon. It's a live action, you know, full of cinematic special effects and creatures and blasters and every kind of stuff from the star wars universe in it so i was i was excited 
to watch it. And I remember when it first started, you know, the opening sequence started and I, I was really excited and I sat there and I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm watching a Star Wars TV show. <laughs> and I enjoyed the whole first episode. Well, but the first episode, that's, it was enough for me. Just, I, I, I take in uh, viewing, like, you know, TV and movies and stuff. I take it in one episode at a time like I'll, I'll watch 40 minutes and then oh. i'll go on with my life and, oh. and then maybe i'll sit down the next day at the earliest to, to see the next episode wait, right i don't wait. binge i don't wait. i'm not a binger boy pointing fingers no, at me pointing fingers. i'm oh I'm the ex- voice just pointed at me <laughs> i'm explaining oh ouch what? i'm Ow. explaining why sienna Ow. was left on the couch by Ow. herself well, so I abandoned Sienna okay, on the but, couch. I'm but so wait, sorry. So are you saying, though, okay, if I'm hearing you correctly, mm-hmm. that means at some point you're going to go to episode two and watch it from the start. I mean, Actually, I was telling you I'm everything, probably, everything that happened. Yeah, I'm probably not because you you did very good at, you know, uh, catching me up with what happens in the plot. And, and, okay. and that's enough for me. Well, so I'm not, so I'm obviously not that huge of a star wars fan but i am a pretty huge fan but not like some other people you are who a huge would fan on which is why i'm like i think you should needing. you should watch it because there's a lot of things that because i'm not a huge fan right well i mean obviously i watched well, it but i'm not a huge like i had to okay so toast is so patient we kept having to pause because i'm like who's this Who's this guy again? So I'm talking about the... Yeah, I'm like, what is that? So wait, just tell me, is he good guy or bad guy? Just tell me, good guy, bad guy? Because she kept telling me about all this stuff. And I'm like, that doesn't say the good guy or bad guy part of it. And then she's like, oh, he's a bounty hunter. And then I'm like, oh, I know that to be Boba Fett. So I'm like, he looks like that Boba Fett guy. So I'm like, oh, they're the same guys. But I mean, he wasn't... He was the same... um, Tribe. heritage or whatever i don't know yeah, what i don't know is. something like that that's about all i know so, but, yeah. but anyway so i had to ask so many questions and other times i'm like oh the sand persons are the sand person is here or the sand people are here and she goes she would come and go that's not the sand people <laughs> so i'm like oh okay that's not the sand people and i'm like oh those little people with the glowing eyes are here <laughs> yeah. whatever those people are i love it i love it and so i really like I'm a fan. I don't th- even think I can say I'm a fan, right? I mean, I will be there for all the movies and any movie they come out. So maybe I'm a loose fan. Yeah, you're a loose fan. Okay. But here is what happened that made me stick with it. Okay. Well, don't I'm gonna spoil tell- it for people though, right? I have to. I'm sorry. Okay. If, if okay. you don't Just want fast to spoil forward. people, then, then just stop it. Okay, right now. Fair okay. warning. That's so you've di- you've done your due diligence because I don't because I want them to know why I stuck through. Okay, the first four <laughs> episodes. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> because they introduced baby Yoda, <laughs> <laughs> baby Yoda. You guys, baby Yoda. Come on, come on! Oh my now. God, so cute. So cute. <sighs> so Disney. cute. Now here, now I know everyone's going, wait, I thought you didn't like animated, all that kind of stuff. Well, Yoda's not anim- animated. Number one. Right. So there. But he's so cute. <laughs> his ears. Toast his ears. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. His ears. Okay. So I got to say <laughs> that so honestly, funny. I do not think I would have watched through if they hadn't introduced Baby Yoda. And that is the brilliance of Disney. Yes. I think. Baby Yoda did it for me. And I just had to see what was going to happen. What's going to happen to Baby Yoda? What's going to happen to Baby Yoda? What's going to happen to Baby Yoda? Where's Baby Yoda going? Is he going to go get Baby Yoda? I had to know Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. see his cute self. Because if you know Yoda... (laughs) Baby Yoda, Yoda is so cute because cute baby, I was. baby Yoda is mm-hmm. greener 
than old, old, old Yoda. He's not wrinkled. Where I have become. He's giant eyes and his ears are even bigger. Baby Yoda is so cute, you guys. So cute. All your DHEA is going to just like, you're going to make so much DHEA. <laughs> okay, you have to explain. If you watch what The Mandalorian. D- <laughs> you have to explain what DHEA is. Well, now. I think we have in the past. It's the just mother really hormone. It's okay, the mother so it's hormone. A, it's a hormone that your body makes whenever you are, what, exposed to things that you find cute, basically, Well, that, right? the research has shown that people who watch all the cat videos, yeah. their DHEA increases, right? So funny. So, you know, and then cat as you videos. get older, a lot of times you need to supplement with DHEA, which Toast and I actually supplement with DHEA, but I bet I don't need any for a whole week because of the Mandalorian. Okay. Well... Because of Baby Yoda. And then the last thing I'll say about The Mandalorian, though, is I think last week we talked about cool people. Like, okay. In a previous episode. Cool? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I will say The Mandalorian is cool. Oh, really? He's so cool. Oh, well, looks, I okay. think so. It's oh. just like so cool. But they cool. didn't show his face yet, right? No. Okay. You know what would be hilarious? Is if he turns out to be a woman. I would love that. Could happen. Well, I don't know. You mean oh, we and, care his, about... and his helmet makes a different voice? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. All we care about is Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. So cute. You guys. Well, I'm still waiting for confirmation that that <sighs> actually is Yoda. Is it? That is Yoda. Well, it's. It's a kind. It's well. It's, Yo- it's a Yoda's creature heritage. from that. Yeah, it's a creature from whatever that race or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I would. It's I, Yoda. I've become more convinced that he must be Yoda because it's otherwise, y- why would he be so important to them? But I just, I'm not familiar with where in the timeline well, of I'm the Star Wars say... universe we are at during this Mandalorian series. Anyway, it's just for me. It's just a tickle to see the Star Wars universe on the tv done in such a you know 100 percent kind of way it's like yeah we're gonna do all of the special effects and the humor it's not like that star wars christmas special that happened back in wherever it was no clue what that is oh my god that was a disaster people who are alive during that time the star wars fans um who are listening will know what i'm talking about like with the original Star Wars people? Yes. It was a with Mark what? Hamill. There was a kind of Star Wars Christmas special with the Muppets or something like that. What? And it was yes. Oh, like a Look variety entertainment it. show? I think like they were I, singing. You know, I and was stuff? so I, I I don't have what? a vivid, vivid memory of it. Oh my but God. I just know what? that it's been um a very maligned uh yeah, segment of that the Star Wars. That does not go together, Star Wars and Christmas in the Star Wars. I mean, I guess it actually does go together, Star Wars and Christmas, but whatever. Okay. Okay. All right. The Mandalorian. What are we talking about? That's your review from from Santa Yoda and Toast. The topic for this episode, how to dream again. I'll get the fire back. Oh, man. This is a topic for grown-ups. Yes. You know, because the kids, they're dreaming Right, the little kids, kids are so good at you, dreaming. You can't stop them from dreaming. Yeah, you know they're, that's they're fine. But after you you've been the ad- adult and doing the adulting thing for a period of time, you start to kind of go Lose to sleep. That dream faculty, dreaming faculty. I think. Yeah, and then you wake up yeah. one day and you realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, what happened? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, okay. So, Toast, why don't you just talk a little bit about last week's episode? Okay, so last week's was episode number 73, and it was titled, You Are Enough. And in that episode, we just laid it back, and we're very relaxed, and (laughs) we were... (laughs) We were... At that making point, a Toast case. had half a cup of coffee. Okay. No, we were we were <laughs> making a case for the importance and the value of having what we called sky moments. So, where you just mm. look around, look up at the sky, figuratively and or literally, 
and just be in the moment and take it in and have the experience of feeling like, man, this is enough. I'm alive in this world. That's a freaking miracle. I love it. And there's a feeling and a sensation of fulfillment and satisfaction that you cannot buy except with your time and attention. That's the only way you can buy it. So that was last week's episode, right? You're enough. Don't, don't feel <clears throat> um, or don't get sucked in to the white water rapids current. Don't go over the edge of the waterfall of this white water of messaging that's all around us of like, you have to be in the top 10 or if, if you don't, if you're not, what have you done with your life? You know, all that, you know what I'm talking about. The message of Whatever striving that, yeah. and driving mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. being a go-getter and, you know, <clears throat> being one of the movers and shakers, right? Last week we made that case for, you know, sometimes just step back from that man and realize you're enough. You're enough. But we weren't saying, <clears throat> so this is what, so we're, we don't want that podcast to be misinterpreted as we don't, we're not saying, oh, just have sky moments 24 seven mm -hmm. where you're just in, <laughs> you're just going out every, you know, and you just be like, yeah, you're man. just looking at the sky and you're not really doing anything because we are here, we're each here meant to contribute in some way, shape, or form Yes, with our gifts. Mm -hmm. There are only, there are certain gifts that only you can bring, mm -hmm. that only I can bring, that only Toast can bring, and we are meant to bring these gifts to fruition mm -hmm. in order to leave the world a better place. Yes. Truly, truly, truly. So in order to do those things, you need to take action. You need to do certain things and to remove yourself from a sky moment and come back to a sky moment. But it's not about we weren't talking. We're not talking about rat racing it. Yes, there's a I guess what we're doing in this episode is <clears throat> saying that there's a difference between dreaming and um, being engaged with the fulfillment of your dream and becoming the next better version of yourself, right? Mm -hmm, That's one mm -hmm. thing, <clears throat> which is different from trying to achieve and trying to get something done and trying to uh, achieve certain status or a certain net worth and a certain amount of X, Y, and Z so that you can feel like you're good enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a different thing that's totally different so we yeah, wanted to just very make... easy to there yeah. and i think they very often just get bunched up into the same thing right. in our culture right? right people don't take the time to distinguish between those two things mm -hmm. so that's what yeah. we want so we wanted to to make that distinction mm -hmm. but also <clears throat> what's different what we wanted to address in this particular episode is and we titled it How to Dream Again, because oftentimes uh, on the whole opposite end of that rat race type mentality mm -hmm. and that kind of force field, right, of mm -hmm. rat racing, rat racing and achieving. Sometimes you can go on the other side of the spectrum and just be autopiloting. I mean, I guess rat race can be autopilot, but I'm talking about going on autopilot. Like you wake up, you go to work, you take the same route to work, you do the same thing at work, you go to lunch. And the days just you're run You're done together. with work, you go home, you eat, you just, yeah, the days run together. You're just, you just become numb to your life and you can't even remember what you had intended your life to be. Mm. You don't remember what you used to dream about. Mm. You don't remember what you had hoped, you know, how you hoped your life would look like. Mm. You're just so on that energy of it's same like thing, day in, day out, same thing. Yeah. You're on the, you're on the, um, it's like you're that piece of luggage on the airport carousel. Oh, that nobody gets. And you just keep going around the same oh, carousel. Yeah? 
like yeah. that. And you're like, where's the person? Or you, and it's been so long that you just forgot that there was a person. Oh, and you're just sad. on the carousel, and, and no one gave you out. a red ribbon or the red <clears throat> pom pom on your handle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's so sad. So like that. Anyways, yes. So don't be like that. We don't have to be like that. Okay. You know? And this, yeah. And well, well, I'll be honest. We'll be honest. Like we're talking about this because this is um, a challenge for us. Like I think it is for a lot of adults, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like we're being honest and real and trying to talk about real stuff stuff that a lot of people don't talk about i don't hear this topic talked about very much do you maybe i'm just not i don't get around i mean i do (laughs) i mean i mean everyone has their own their own way to to discuss it so i think I mean, I have, but it's not like it's the majority of the messaging that I hear. So I definitely think this message is worth, you know, talking about. And, you know, one of the things that I'll say is uh, for Toast and I, we met um, as creatives. We met doing creative work. Mm -hmm. We met doing music. So one of the things that connected us wasn't just the music itself. It actually was the spirituality behind why we were doing music, you know, um, how we wanted to write songs, the kind of songs we wanted to put out there. And so I would say that at the time that we met, we were total dreamers Mm -hmm. and not in a bad word dreamers. You know how like some people have, they put that bad spin on dreamers. You're just a dreamer. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Not in that way, just that we knew the message we wanted to put out there with our music. Mm -hmm. We knew what we wanted to do, all of that stuff. So we met as dreamers. A lot of life happened. We had a lot of amazing experiences. We had a lot of challenging experiences. And that led us to then um, deciding, hey, we need to get um, like a job, like job, job, not like, um, singing for our supper type of work. Okay. Um, non, non-musical jobs. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. at the time we were doing, you know, it was, we were doing music a lot and doing a lot of gigs, but it was, it was hard. It was very, it's, it's a different kind of energy output that you give. Um, doing music full time isn't necessarily, um, it wasn't how we thought it would be doing music full time. Mm. You know, you also want to not just be gigging. You want time to actually write new music, do new music, mm-hmm. still fill your creative well. But we were just putting music out, 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 performing, performing, performing that it was it was tough for us. Like we really got spent. Yeah, it was a different time. You know, there it was, was a different no, time. There yeah. was no uh, it wasn't the Patreon. Intro- Oh, there wasn't Patreon. There wasn't, it wasn't like how people put music out there, um, just left and right every day. They put a song on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. It it wasn't like that. Um, but anyways, we're coming to you from a different era. Yes. So (laughs) we, so then we were like, okay, we got to get jobs. Um, and actually when we did get jobs, we felt like just this relief of like, okay, we got off our own rat race, our own mm-hmm. creative rat race. Mm-hmm. race. Um, but, but what happened for us is, and maybe I'll speak for myself at this point. Um, what happened for me is that getting on that day job vibe of part to work at this time, the job ends at this time, you, do, the you know, and it's the same structure. thing. I swear, I really felt like I lost my capacity to dream, Mm -hmm. you know, and I always really felt in touch with that part of myself that could vision out, that could um, see what I wanted in life that could, you know, but I got to say that after years of being in a, in a day job situation, it's like the trade-offs are it's crazy. And that's why the thing about life is like, 
it's never just one thing or the other thing. It's like a balance, a beautiful balance dance of a little bit of everything, right? right? Mm -hmm. Still doing music in a creative way, still writing so it fills our well, still doing music in public, right? Mm -hmm. While also still having some kind of a job that brings in the steady income Mm -hmm. while we have our creative well still full, Mm -hmm. but not having such a job where it's such a high pressure job that your well is being drained. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. The dance, you know? So anyways, um, so as Tos was saying, yeah, you know, I, I have had a hard time going, how do I dream again? Mm -hmm. Um, so we wanted to share a little bit about that and, and I'll share with you a few things that has helped me kind of get back into that mode. Well, okay. Wow. So many. Okay. Wow. We could do like a whole series on this topic. Look at how late, I mean, look how much we've, this podcast has been on. Yeah. And actually, you know what? I mean, this topic, (laughs) that's Sienna slurping from her straw. I mean, it is true. We could do a whole series on this topic. And you know why? It's because this is what we, you and I, um, and this podcast are really all about. Right. Right. Living your love story. Exactly. And and by that, we do mean living uh, the essence of your dreaming self. And by Mm -hmm. that, we mean your eternal self. So. But explain um, what that is, because I feel like. Your eternal self? Yeah. Like, what does it mean? Because I think people... I think sometimes, I, I think, think sometimes it, it's helpful to just spell it out. Yeah. I, when I say that, I mean a combination of the self that knows how to have sky moments mm-hmm. and a sense of fulfillment and a sense of familial connection with the nature around you and the yeah. nature that is you, mm-hmm. right? This sense of visceral connection and identification with the natural world. And realizing that I am, I am part of this world. Yeah. Right. What is that thing that they say at funerals to dust to dust or whatever, like you're going to return, like Mm -hmm. having a visceral sensation to me, that's a spiritual experience. And that is one of those sky moment type of things. It's like, wow, there's a kind of magic and wonder and awe just in that, just in that. But it's when I talk about the eternal you. And living your love story and being in touch with that. I'm talking about combining that Mm -hmm. with the just as true fact that the natural world evolves. The natural world grows and goes through cycles of growth and change and it's dynamic. And that's what each of us is meant to do and feels um, a, a pull and a call to. Because we are part of the natural world. Yeah. And um, that's why I love the metaphor of fire and the fire inside, the fire um, of dreaming again. Um, Because fire, even though it's listed as, oh, it's one of the elements, right? Like earth and air and water and all that. Fire. Fire is not actually a thing. It's not, it's, it's not an element, right? It's not a, it's not a part of matter what it actually is it's it's the um tangible evidence of matter that is undergoing a transformation Mm. that's what fire is it's it's what you see and 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 feel in the way of heat and hear in the way of the crackling fire is a magical thing that we can perceive with our senses and it only happens when matter is undergoing transformation. And that's what, I think that's why we have this sense of, yeah, what's, where's the fire inside? Mm-hmm. Because we feel alive and we feel the fire inside when we are undergoing transformation ourselves, right? When we're evolving into the next thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How come you're looking at bear? Because you were looking at bear. Oh. <laughs> Bear, bear our cat. Okay, bear our cat is perched up top a shelf here, and Sienna was looking at him, so I turned around to look at him. 
but okay mm, i like that but so that you know yeah. that that's what comes to my mind and oh. i can agree with you circling back to what you had shared earlier about you know the the structure of a predictable um schedule mm-hmm. right being having having a numbing effect wait i will can i, 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 I can I, I would just say yeah i know what you mean i have okay. felt that absolutely I, but I want, but as you say that, okay. I would like to say okay. that for some people, that predictable schedule, mm-hmm. they're all about that. You know what I mean? Like for some people, yeah. it won't okay. have that numbing effect. Okay. Sometimes for, I think for some people mm-hmm. having that predictable schedule allows them then to be more free outside of that predictable schedule. Depending. Yes. Depending. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yes. I mean, we need both, right? We need yeah, the sense. Yeah, because we need the people who will do the nine to five or eight to five. Yes. And we, and, and I think just a, on an individual level, as a human organism, we need that sense of security mm-hmm. and certainty, mm-hmm. right? We need, we need to, to yes. feel a sense of safety and that's where uh, that predictable schedule can contribute. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also do need in order to grow and to feel that transformation and fire inside fire, yeah. we we need to have novelty yes. like the the challenges yes. the the push that and is a pull need. towards the yes yeah. exactly exactly yes oh okay. my gosh there's so much we could say about this okay well we have the but... whole rest of our lives to explore it <laughs> i'm not even kidding <laughs> <laughs> but i will say okay I'm going to give um, an exercise Okay. that was helpful for me. Okay. And um, okay, now when I share this with you all, you're going to go, what? It's boring. Ooh, or, set up. or you might go, um, what? That's it? I don't want to do that. But I got to tell you, I had so much resistance to this exercise. Mm. I, some internal dialogue was like, this is so dumb. <laughs> All right. Okay. (laughs) Okay. But here it is every day, preferably around the same time every day. So if it's, if, if that's the morning for you, great. If that's right before you go to bed, great, whatever. Every day, jot down the first things that come to mind when answering, what would I love? You're going to jot down five things every day, five things. What would I love? write down anything that comes to mind. And for me, Hmm. and this is, well, okay. So what you, what you might find is like, I'm writing the same thing every day. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I can imagine myself doing that. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Keep doing the exercise. If you are writing the same thing every day, oftentimes that means or can mean that there is a cap on your dreaming self. But as the cap loosens, as you unplug the cap, you will find that other things come come in. You know, it's really about exercising that dreaming muscle, Mm. opening up that uh, part of you that invites in what's possible. What's possible for my life? Mm. What do I want to do, be, have? What do, you know, it's just the dream. It's like, it's like play, right? We don't know as adults, oftentimes we forget how to play. Yes. So this exercise yes. is like playing, you know, okay. it's not about like, okay, well, what would I love? Um, let's see. Well, okay. Let me well, take no, an assessment. I'm not going to write that because that's not practical. When would I ever get to travel or when would I ever get to take a month off? Why am I, why is my voice like this? I don't know. When would I ever get to take a month off in Italy? When am I, you know, hmm. the whole thing is to bypass that reasoning, logical brain. Okay. As much as we love reason and logic, we don't want it here. It has no place in the dreaming field. So we want to just bypass that and go. What would I love? So this to is go a, to the zoo. That, that's I don't know. That's what came to my mind just in this moment. <laughs> okay, so so that that was really helpful to hear you say that this is not this is an exercise for your creative self. Mm-hmm. That's all mm-hmm. this is, right? That this is a creative it doesn't imagination mean, exercise. It doesn't mean you're gonna need you're gonna go and put it in your calendar and calendarize. Okay, this is my okay. next goal. 
you are exercising your muscle of your dreaming muscle, the, the faculty poss- that knows how to dream, okay. the opening up possibilities. Because we're so often shut down, we don't see the we don't see our opportunities right in front of us mm-hmm. because we're not on that frequency. Mm-hmm. We're not looking for it. We're not open to it because we're just stuck in the day to day existing. Mm. And so part of this dreaming exercise is to really open up and calibrate our frequency to what's possible for me. Because even when we do write down what we would love for our life, and I'm talking about now, not just the exercise, but okay, here's 2020. Here's a new year for me. What would I love for this year? What's really important to me? When we get down to that point, there's only so much that we can dream up, right? Well, when we get down to actually planning, then it's no longer purely an imagination exercise. Right, right. Is that but what I you're guess, saying? Is that what you're well, referring what I'm, to? What I'm really saying is that as a human being, right, we are spiritual beings having this human experience. As human beings in this experience, there's only a certain amount we can dream. But God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, truly does see the full terrain. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And can see a bigger dream than even what we're capable of dreaming. Okay. It's kind of like how Oprah was like, dream a bigger dream then. Right? How when people, how she would have a guest who's... um you know, maybe wrote this very profound book and and they're talking about the book and the guest might say something like, all I ever wanted to do was write a book that would make a difference for people. And Mm -hmm. Oprah might be there going, well, done. You've done that. So now you have to dream a bigger dream. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we can only dream. We have a certain capacity for what, even after doing our dreaming exercises and stuff like that, we exercise this faculty, but we still only have a certain capacity to dream what we can dream. Okay. But the universe has a bigger dream for us. Okay. And we can slowly allow more of that in as we're willing to open up to all the possibilities there are. Yes. For us. Yes. I see. So. That's evolution. Yes, that is. Green growing edge, the becoming. That's the next. Yeah. Yeah. Look how long, our podcast went really long. Oh, we're fine. Is that long? Okay. <laughs> so we've um, had longer episodes than this. <clears throat> uh, okay. So anything that's... else? Any other closing <sighs> moments? Toast. Well, the exercise that you're describing about listing five things and that it really helped me to to understand like, oh, this is an imagination exercise because that really helps me to take the cap off, as you say, Mm -hmm. right. To remove that Mm -hmm. glass ceiling of like, Hey, just play, man. Just, it's just, play. you know, there's a sandbox. What do you want to add some water and build a castle or whatever you want to do? Just play around with, with what your, your mind, what your imagination can come up with of like, Hey, what would you love? You know, that that's very helpful because I think in the past, when I would hear about that exercise, um, I would automatically, and this is a result of, you know, adulting, right? I would automatically put on that filter of what's, um, what's practical that I would love Mm -hmm. or what's possible that I would love. Exactly. You know, what's within the realm of, um, physical possibility that I would Mm -hmm. love. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. But and now so I'm like, us- you know what? I would, it would be really interesting to try time travel. And here's the it thing. It would be really interesting to be able to fly without worrying about oxygen and temperature. See, but what that exercises in you mm-hmm. is just the energetic quality of the possibility. Yeah. Just opening up to mm-hmm. things that you wouldn't otherwise think for yourself right. unless asked. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why that that's why that this exercise is so important. And Mm -hmm. for me, when I did it the first time, like I would have the same answers, maybe different order, (laughs) you know, for for like weeks. And then finally, 
something broke through mm. and then I could start to play. Mm. Like I had such a hard time bringing that part up in me okay. of just being able to play with it, you know, cool. and just write whatever it is. And I think it's just so important because as you know, when we're putting the cap on mm -hmm. and just like, well, I'll write this because I can see how it can happen. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I'll write this because we're shutting off so much. Hmm. As far as yeah, what our deprived. opportunities are, what uh, we could, what could we really do? And I guess we're also, you know, figuratively, we're depriving our creative dimension of oxygen, mm -hmm. right? We're mm -hmm. strangling the creative dimension of ourselves, totally. Totally. the imaginative dimension of ourselves. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, I would really love to time travel, but that doesn't mean that now I have to consider devoting my life to scientific exploration into <laughs> traveling through time. You know, yeah. it's just like, Hey, it's an imagination exercise. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. I think, um, just to close it off, not to make this episode any longer, just to close it off. Um, I would share that something that I feel kind of stokes and the fire inside for me is challenging myself in physical workouts, mm. you know, just to mm -hmm. get it really, um, in my blood in a literal way of like yeah. challenging myself to do, you know, like six pull-ups or seven pull-ups, like can't, you know, like, okay, okay. You just put everything into it. And I guess that is a literal way of like pushing beyond my limits, mm. mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. expanding my limits and what, um, I can experience. And I find that when I, when I do that, it's very, very challenging. It can be painful, but the fire goes on inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? It's just putting yourself, and I guess it's similar to this imagination exercise because it's just putting your organism, it's putting your, your entity into, into a different uh, state of relating to, quote, reality. Right. It's just pushing the boundary, pushing the boundary. Well, I would. OK, I, w I would like to say that I disagree with you. <laughs> OK, OK, because I don't think it's it's like this. I mean, I, I think that maybe what you're explaining On a different plane. is more like um, more of a masculine energy way of approaching it. OK. And then maybe my exercise is more of the feminine in approaching it. Okay. I yes. think. I can, um, and I think one I can of the things you're that you're talking about also too, why it's like one positive, um, another positive way of the exercise you're, you just shared mm -hmm. is the increase of testosterone, which is great. That helps the fire, right? Like the, oh, like to help okay. you, the drive, like, the feeling like, about? like, um, cause testosterone is, the, is the hormone that like the, the go, go get them. Right. <laughs> and sometimes we don't have enough of that. Like in a true physical, your, your body's, you know, what your body's making and what it's not making enough of and stuff like that. Especially in our, in our time where the environment contains so many so much more estrogens. estrogenic yep. things, yep. right? Yep. Like, yep. Yeah. So that's a true, like, so what you're explaining hmm. is probably very measurable and true that you are feeling all those things because you're increasing your um, testosterone level. Okay. So that's also a really good tip. Um, with it's interesting. Yeah. The go get them part of it. Not the rat race part, the go get them part. Yeah. The balanced go get them part. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was fun. I think that was good. Yeah. Okay. So hope you guys think that was good. Hope you folks enjoyed <laughs> the po Oh, something I did want to, want to share. Um, we've been talking a lot about our shop, but because we realized that as good business people, you have to let people know what you have in order for them to become a customer. So um, even though we're not talking about literal dreaming, like sleeping and then dreaming about whatever, some people really want to, um, I've heard from people like, I want to dream, I, I, you know, dream in my sleep, or I don't dream, or I want to remember my dreams. We recently brought on this um, dream oil 
to our shop and we have gotten such great feedback about it. We've used it ourselves and it not only helps you have a more restful sleep and a deeper sleep, but it also can help you to um, dream. So it is called, what is it called? Oh, it's called dream. (laughs) (laughs) So on our shop, Toast will have the the link, um, but it's made with full spectrum hemp um, extract, CBD oil, and therapeutic grade um, essential Essential oils. oils. Mm -hmm. It smells very yummy. And, um, I'm just, I want to tell you what some of the oils are. Yeah. So it has lavender, blue tansy. Um, I don't know that oil though. What is that? LM? Yeah. LME. LME. Um, sweet orange, rose auto. Oh, yummy, yummy stuff. It's Mm -hmm. so good. So absolutely good. It's also infused with Reiki. Um, we love it. So if you are either having trouble sleeping or you want to, remember more of your dreams check out this oil and again you can look at the link and if you leave a review for us and let us know about it we can give you ten dollars off a coupon code yeah leave um rate a review oh, the he's podcast to, on bear's apple trying podcasts to jump. bear watch our out bear our cat's about to jump onto the desk oh god did you hear that okay <laughs> um here we go yeah, leave a re- rating or review for this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please let us know about it so that we can send you a $10 off code to our shop. And the way you let us know is just email us. Email us info at siennaandtoast.com. Okay. okay, so thank you so much for staying with us. And until next time, this is Sienna. And this is Toast. Inviting you to come and live your love story.